Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about the latest studio album from Hideous Divinity entitled Unextinct. This is the fifth full-length studio album from this Italian technical and progressive death metal crew, and what I really like most about their take on technical and progressive death metal is how much more nuanced and cinematic and immersive it is in comparison to your standard modern-day technical and progressive death metal. Like, your average Hideous Divinity record is dense and cram-packed with detail and out-of-this-world musicianship, but it never feels especially, like, show off -y, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like Hideous Divinity are just kind of jerking off in a fucking studio in the way that, like, your standard artisan era or unique leaders style tech def band would. I feel like Hideous Divinity is more interested in creating a certain kind of vibe and atmosphere and just kind of swallowing the listener whole. And they accomplish this so consistently, not just by writing really powerful, effective, menacing, cathartic music, but by also bringing in influences from classic literature and even Hollywood film. For example, their debut album, 2012's Obedience Rising, is heavily based on John Carpenter's They Live. Meanwhile, their previous studio album, 2019's Simulcrumon, is based on David Lynch's Lost Highway. And even the LV426 EP released back in 2021 is based on Ridley Scott's Alien. And unlike the likes of, say, Ice Nine Kills, Hideous Divinity are able to pull influence from these works and pay homage to them without resorting to an endless cavalcade of Easter eggs and references. These stories exist on these albums not to provide you with an opportunity to go, Hey, I remember that! But rather to provide Hideous Divinity with an opportunity to write more epic, powerful, consuming stuff, which is complemented by the narrative, by the story in question, the, the film, the, the book, the whatever. And this new album, Unextinct, is no exception whatsoever, with direct influence being pulled from Bram Stoker's legendary novel, Dracula, specifically Chapter 7, which deals with the crew of the Demeter and their unfortunate encounters with uh, uh, the vampiric overlord in question. And the end result is every bit as enormous and majestic as it is totally menacing and totally crushing. Dare I even argue the best thing Hideous Divinity have ever made. I'm tempted to say it. I'm, I'm really genuinely tempted here. You've got the double whammy of Dust Settles on Humanity and the Numinous One opening this record on an absolutely stellar note on the former cut. We have these cascading riffs and rhythms and eerie sounds and textures and this like menacing laugh, which I assume is Dracula spying on me from inside of my speaker. And that is contrasted with some pummeling, bombastic, technical and brutal death metal, then transitioning into the absolutely massive Numinous One, which I mean, honestly, just sounds like the full force of the ocean crashing against the Demeter itself while aforementioned Dracula is is fucking uh, uh, making himself known. He's saying hello to the crew, nibbling on some necks and such. Some really great guitar work across the board here. I mean, you've got your searing, scorching, tech def pyrotechnics, but you also have some more melodic guitar work with a really grim, sinister kind of underbelly to it. Ferocious vocal work, surgically precise, insanely tight, insanely brutal percussion as well. Then you have Atto Corto, The Horror Paradox, which is probably one of the most sonically extreme and brutal cuts on the record, and also maybe one of the most dense. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening here. There's a lot of, like, dissonant guitar work kind of happening in the background, a lot of, like, funky, hyper-technical, grimy bass work wriggling its way in and out of the forefront of the sound. There's some more extreme, dare I say, kind of, like, black and death metal-ish riffage and percussion as well all throughout. The first minute or so of this cut especially does an amazing job at immediately putting you on the edge of your seat. Like, this opens with some very quiet, subdued, nervous, even kind of frantic guitar and string work. Like, it just kind of sounds like somebody anxiously whittling away. It sounds like the literal calm before the literal storm. And you know the storm is coming. And you know the storm is going to fuck shit up. And then that transitions into some really dark, doomy plotting. We get these bellowing, monstrous vocals. 
We get these almost tribal kind of drum fills as well. And this kind of guitar work that almost brings to mind like the wailings of a siren or an emergency alarm. Then there's Mysterium Tremendum, a stormy rampaging cut filled with flurries of technical bass and guitar work. Absolutely brutal pummeling percussion, maybe some of the fastest and some of the most intense on the record to be honest. It's a very bleak and bloodthirsty and depraved cut for sure, so much so that even when it does appear to slow down and kind of dip its toes into more ambient and spacious waters, I, I kind of can't help but think like, I'm not safe. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not good here, man. I should not get too comfortable. And I was right to think that, by the way, because it doesn't take long after this for Hideous Divinity to return to the endless beating. Hair, Dirt, and Mud is another track that plays around with these spacious ambient sections as well, in a way that almost kind of feels like Ahab, but if they kind of tried their hands at, like, technical or blackened death metal. Like, it has these massive, elongated sections, and it kind of drones on, and it creates, like, a really interesting, almost transcendent kind of atmosphere and aura, which is then quite violently disrupted, dare I say even, violated by the usual chaos and brutality uh, on display on this record. I mean, it is just an absolutely gnarly fucking switch. The closing number, Leben und Führ, is great as well, though I will say by this point in the record, I'm maybe starting to feel overwhelmed and even a little bit exhausted. I mean, this is an unrelenting record from start to finish. As I've said before, so dense, so brutal. There's so much detail, so many different twists and turns, so many different riffs and dynamics. But hey, we're still ending things on a pretty satisfying and cathartic note, so who am I to really argue? I'm especially loving some of the twin guitar leads uh, that are interwoven through like the solo passages and the latter half of this song, which feels a little bit more dramatic and evocative. With these more drawn out riffs and these pummeling little shotgun bursts of like technical and brutal death metal, and also these like wailing rabid vocals at like the very end. With no fat or filler present on this album to speak of, with no duds coming to mind whatsoever, I feel pretty comfortable giving this a very enthusiastic 4 out of 5. We're pretty much right there on the edge of, of a 4.5 out of 5, to be honest. I think the reason why I'm not going for that score is just because by the end of this, even though I'm still enjoying myself, I am starting to feel a little overwhelmed and tired. Interestingly, much like Dracula himself, if you're not careful, this album can really, like, drain and fucking pummel you. Combine that with the fact that this album is so dense, so cram-packed with detail and rich story and lore and drama, and yeah, uh, not, not an album I'm going to listen to in a, a casual setting. Not anytime soon, at least. That being said, the artistry and the ambition on display here is remarkable. Like, this is one of those albums where if I hear somebody talking shit about modern-day tech death and progressive death metal, I would show this to them, and I'd be like, you gotta check this out, man. If you are a total extreme metal connoisseur and you're looking to get your internal organs rearranged this weekend, I definitely think this is the album you should be on the lookout for. If you're brand new to Hideous Divinity and, like, super extreme technical, progressive, and brutal death metal, I think I would recommend you check out LV426 first, or maybe some of the singles released in advance of this album, and then kind of see how you feel, but definitely do give it a shot. Once again, very enthusiastic 4 to 5, right there on the edge of a 4.5 out of 5. Who knows, uh, maybe in a couple months time I will have to uh, come back and, and change my score because I've spent more time with it and I'll be like, oh my god, yeah, it really is an incredible record. Oh my fucking god. But for the time being, I don't think anyone's going to argue with a very enthusiastic 4 to 5. Check it out. Holy shit. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you can get updates on the Metal Meltdown-y fucking immediately. Join us on Discord. Pick up some merch on Redbubble. Look, there's even more videos here. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.